Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Joanne and I'm also known as the, oh, I've called myself the Learner law Lawyer because I'm a law student from Australia, first year law student. Don't know how I'm going to go uh, to sit in exams. Apparently, I am too succinct for my writing. I get to the point too quickly and I don't waffle enough in my writing. But anyway, that's another problem. Look, I've always wondered why Google didn't give any defences in the Barrel Hour case. And The Guardian, um, Amanda Mead from The Guardian has actually posted an article this morning that may actually answer the questions. It comes down to jurisdiction. Google is a US company and they could be protected by, by US law and Barillaro may not get a cent. So let's have a look at what Amanda Mead says. As I said, it's very, very, very interesting. Um, very interesting indeed. So let's have a look and see what is going on here. So powerful US laws could shield Google from paying John Barillaro defamation damages, says expert. So... Australian courts may not be able to enforce an order that Google paid John Barillaro because of free speech protections in the US. Uh, Google, the owner of YouTube, was on Monday ordered to pay. So we know that they were ordered to pay aggravated damages over a series of defamatory, racist, abusive videos. Federal Court Justice Stephen Rares ruled that Barillaro had been left traumatised by a campaign of relentless cyberbullying by Shanks who uses the non diploma friendly joinings. Dr. Damien Spray, an expert in social media, impacts on politics and diplomacy, says there are a couple of very powerful American laws that protect US-based internet companies from defamation penalties. The important point is Google can try to ignore the court ruling because US laws provide a shield US companies can hide behind. What, is Google, what, is, what Google is going to do is the big question. I think it's consequential to, to agree if Google abides by the court ruling, and that's a big if, they've kind of accepted local jurisdiction. It comes down to this jurisdiction. Obviously, they can afford to pay the money, but they can't afford to be dragged into court over and over again. So if they pay this, then it's open slather. They could be sued multiple times. So Professor Ralph, uh, David Rolfe, a media law expert at the University of Sydney, said so the Barillaro case is the first time in Australia that YouTube as a platform has been held liable for users' content. But what happens next is uncertain because Australian courts don't necessarily have jurisdiction to enforce judgments against US-based companies. Certainly in the US, there are companies where these companies are based have different defamation laws. The difficulty is that you have these companies that operate throughout the world that have persuasive technologies, oh, sorry, yeah, persuasive technologies and platforms that pervade everyday life. Pervasive, sorry, technologies and platforms that pervade everyday life. But the question that becomes locally is that particular multinational entity amenable to a local court's jurisdiction? And even if it is, there's a judgment that results from that proceeding. Can you enforce the judgment? Also, Google looked at the content Barillaro complained about and formed a view that there was nothing wrong with it, in line with their policies, and allowed it to stay up. But the High Court in the Dylan Voller defamation case found that publishers could be held liable for defamatory comments on their social media pages. The content policies of those large media companies are informed very much by the First Amendment values, which creates a tension with laws that apply in other places around the world, like Australia. And that's how you ha can have a situation where Google looked at content and concluded it doesn't volatile, volatile or sorry, violate it, their content policies. Just as just as Rez looks at it and concludes that it's very defamatory. Barillaro launched legal action over both Shanks and Google over two videos, videos titled Bros and Secret Dictatorship, claiming they were vile and racist and brought him into public disrepute, odium, ridicule and contempt. The claim against Shanks was settled in November last year and Shanks apologised for any hawk help caused, editing parts of two videos and paying legal costs but not damages. Google initially defended the case but withdrew all defences and conceded the videos defamed Barillaro. Spry says one of the two things that's going to happen in this landmark, 
landmark case. Google Australia sees itself as being Google Australia and acts as Google Australia and abide by Australian laws or Google based in America says nothing and just refuses. Justice Rez also referred the conduct of Shanks and Google to the Principal Registrar of the Court to consider proceedings against them for what appears to be serious contempt. He said Friendly Geordie's video in December attacking the professional integrity of Barilaro's legal team was a spinetic and vindictive attack calculated to bring in proper pressure to intimidate each of them from continuing to act from Barilaro. So here's the question. Here's my question to you. Does Google pay and open the floodgates for lots of litigation in Australia or do they do nothing and see what happens? Because, uh, and I said, there's Google Australia, but it's under the entity of the Google US. So do they do, they do the jurisdiction thing and say Australian courts don't have jurisdiction? Now, if that is the view that Google's taking, I now understand why they didn't defend and they said it was defamatory because they knew that there was going to be no jurisdiction and nothing was going to happen. Anyway, I'm interested to find out what you think. Please uh, <laughs> tell me what you think in the comments below. This case, I tell you, is, is getting more and more interesting, more and more bizarre. I thank you for joining me. Make sure you hit like and subscribe and do all the YouTube things and I will catch you again with my next video. Uh, so for now, I bid you farewell, but tell me what you think in the comments below. Bye for now.